Welcome to the Secrets of the Bible Channel. The Bible presents to us various figures from whom we can find comfort in times of injustice. One of them, a man who was severely wronged by a king and queen of Israel, will help us find comfort in the fact that God sees all that happens to us. His name is Naboth. Naboth's story in the Bible involves the downfall of the wicked king Ahab of Israel and his infamous wife Jezebel. Because of their mistreatment of Naboth, Ahab and Jezebel were each promised an untimely and violent demise. 1 Kings chapter 21 verse 2, New King James Version. So Ahab spoke to Naboth saying, Give me your vineyard that I may have it for a vegetable garden, because it is near next to my house. And for it, I will give you a vineyard better than it. Or if it seems good to you, I will give you its worth in money. Neba was a Jezreelite. He had a vineyard near Ahab's palace in Jezreel. Because it was so close to the palace, Ahab wished to convert Naboth's vineyard into a vegetable garden. 1 Kings chapter 21, verses 3 and 4, New King James Version, But Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid that I should give the inheritance of my fathers to you. So Ahab went into his house sullen and displeased because of the word which Naboth, the Jezreelite, had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give you the inheritance of my fathers. And he lay down on his bed and turned away his face and would eat no food. So the king proposed that he pay Naboth for his vineyard or give him a better vineyard elsewhere. Naboth, on the other hand, was adamant about keeping the land he inherited from his fathers. It was not for sale at any cost. Ahab was dissatisfied and returned home sullen and angry, because he could not have Naboth's vineyard. The haughty king refused to eat. It may appear strange that Naboth would turn down the king's offer, but Naboth was acting correctly. The land must not be sold permanently, God said, and no inheritance in Israel is to pass from one tribe to another. For every Israelite shall keep the tribal inheritance of their ancestors. Naboth was just following the law. King Ahab wanted to break the law, and when Naboth didn't agree, he got angry. Leviticus chapter 25 verse 23 New King James Version The land shall not be sold permanently, for the land is mine, for you are strangers and sojourners with me. Numbers chapter 36 verse 7 New King James Version So the inheritance of the children of Israel shall not change hands from tribe to tribe, for every one of the children of Israel shall keep the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. Queen Jezebel noticed her husband was unhappy in the palace and inquired as to what was wrong. Ahab related his encounter with Naboth to her. 1 Kings chapter 21, verse 7, New King James Version. Then Jezebel his wife said to him, You now exercise authority over Israel. Arise, eat food, and let your heart be cheerful. I will give you the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. Jezebel told him that his king, he could have whatever he wanted. Then she promised to do it herself. Get up and start eating. Rejoice. I'll get you Naboth the Jezreelite's vineyard. Jezebel then went about making plans to have Naboth killed. 1 Kings chapter 21, verses 8 through 10, New King James Version. And she wrote letters in Ahab's name, sealed them with his seal, and sent the letters to the elders and the nobles who were dwelling in the city with Naboth. She wrote in the letters, saying, Proclaim a fast and seat Naboth with high honor among the people, and seat two men, scoundrels before him to bear witness against him, saying, 1 Kings, chapter 21, verses 8 through 10. You have blasphemed God and the king. Then take him out and stone him, that he may die. She began by forging letters from the king, directing the city's noblemen and elders to proclaim a day of fasting and seat Naboth in a prominent place among the people. Two scoundrels were to be stationed near Naboth, accusing him of cursing both God and the king. Naboth was to be stoned to death outside the city on these fabricated charges. The evil plan against Naboth was successful. Jezebel had taken great care to plant two false witnesses, because a death sentence could not be carried out with only one witness. Deuteronomy, chapter 17, verse 6, New King James Version, But he shall not multiply horses for himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt to multiply horses. For the Lord has said to you, You shall not return that way again. So she followed the law when it suited her, that is, when she could twist it to help her lie, steal, and murder. Jezebel's plan included the proclamation of a day of fasting, using a religious ceremony to conceal her murderous intent and ensure Naboth's presence was depraved to the extreme. 
1 Kings chapter 21, verse 15, New King James Version. And it came to pass, when Jezebel heard that Naboth had been stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, which he refused to give you for money, for Naboth is not alive, but dead. When the queen learned that Naboth had died, she informed Ahab that he could now take possession of Naboth's vineyard, which Ahab eagerly accepted. God condemned both Ahab and Jezebel for the heinous murder of Naboth. The prophet Elijah came to the king with a message from God. 1 Kings chapter 21, verses 19 through 24, New King James Version. You shall speak to him, saying, Thus says the Lord, Have you murdered and also taken possession? And you shall speak to him, saying, Thus says the Lord, In the place where dogs licked the blood of Naboth, dogs shall lick your blood, even yours. So Ahab said to Elijah, Have you found me, O my enemy? And he answered, I have found you, because you have sold yourself to do evil in the sight of the Lord. Behold, I will bring calamity on you, I will take away your posterity, and will cut off from Ahab every male in Israel, both bond and free. I will make your house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebuch, and like the house of Basha, the son of Ahijah because of the provocation with which you have provoked me to anger and made Israel sin. And concerning Jezebel, the Lord also spoke, saying, The dog shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. The dog shall eat whatever belongs to Ahab and dies in the city. And the birds of the air shall eat whoever dies in the field. In fact, Elijah encountered Ahab while the king was touring his ill-gotten vineyard. According to the prophet, Have you not murdered and seized a man's property? This is what the Lord says. Dogs will lick up your blood, yes, your blood, in the same place where they licked up Naboth's blood. Next, Elijah predicted that the Lord would bring disaster on Ahab's household, causing every male in Ahab's household to die and be eaten by wild animals rather than being buried honorably. The prophet then predicted the queen's demise. Dogs will devour Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel, 1 Kings 2, 1, 2, 5, 28 NKJV but there was no one like Ahab who sold himself to do wickedness in the sight of the Lord, because Jezebel his wife stirred him up. And he behaved very abominably in following idols, according to all that the Amorites had done, whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. And so it was when Ahab heard these words that he tore his clothes and put sackcloth on his body and fasted and lay in sackcloth and went about mourning. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Ahab repented of his acts toward Naboth after hearing this horrible proclamation. He tore his clothing, put on sackcloth, and humbled himself before God. Because of Ahab's answer, the Lord decided not to send the predicted disaster during Ahab's lifetime, but rather during his son's. Ahab was a very terrible person. He sold himself to do evil, and he did more evil in the eyes of the Lord than any of those before him. 1 Kings Chapter 16 Verse 30, New King James Version, Now Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord, more than all who were before him. Hands that shed innocent blood is among one of the things the Lord despises, and Ahab and Jezebel were surely soiled with Naboth's innocent blood. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 17, New King James Version, A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood. Even in God's punishment of Ahab, however, he gave kindness to a humbled heart. The Lord kept his promise. Ahab was killed in battle and his blood washed out of the chariot in the same area where Naboth had been stoned to death, with the dogs there, as Elijah had predicted. 1 Kings chapter 22, verses 34 through 38, New King James Version. Now a certain man drew a bow at random and struck the king of Israel between the joints of his armor. So he said to the driver of his chariot, Turn around and take me out of the battle, for I am wounded. The battle increased that day, and the king was prompt up in his chariot, facing the Syrians, and died at evening. The blood ran out of the wound onto the floor of the chariot. Then, as the sun was going down, a shout went throughout the army, saying, Every man to his city, and every man to his own country. So the king died and was brought to Samaria. And they buried the king in Samaria. Then someone washed the chariot at a pool in Samaria, and the dogs licked up his blood while the harlots bathed according to the word of the Lord which had been spoken. Jezebel was killed. 
and her body was devoured by dogs. 2 Kings 9, verses 3037, NKJV Now when Jehu had come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she put paint on her eyes and adorned her head, and looked through a window. Then as Jehu entered the gate, she said, Is it peace Zimri, murderer of your master? And he looked up at the window and said, Who is on my side? Who? So two or three eunuchs looked out at him. Then he said, Throw her down. So they threw her down, and some of her blood spattered on the wall and on the horses. And he trampled her underfoot. And when he had gone in, he ate and drank. Then he said, Go now, see to this accursed woman, and bury her. For she was a king's daughter. And so they went to bury her. But they found no more of her than the skull and the feet and the palms of her hands. Therefore they came back and told him, and he said, This is the word of the Lord, which he spoke by his servant Elijah the Tishbite, saying, On the plot of ground at Jezreel dogs shall eat the flesh of Jezebel, and the corpse of Jezebel shall be as refuse on the surface of the field, in the plot at Jezreel, so that they shall not say, Here lies Jezebel. Ahab's entire family was slaughtered. As a result, Nebas' vengeance was exacted to Kings, chapter 10, verses 1 through 17. New King James Version. Now Ahab had seventy sons in Samaria, and Jehu wrote and sent letters to Samaria, to the rulers of Jezreel, to the elders, and to those who reared Ahab's son, saying, Now, as soon as this letter comes to you, since your master's sons are with you, and you have chariots and horses, a fortified city also, and weapons, choose the best qualified of your master's sons. Set him on his father's throne and fight for your master's house. But they were exceedingly afraid and said, Look, Two kings could not stand up to him. How then can we stand? And he who was in charge of the house, and he who was in charge of the city, the elders also, and those who reared the sons, sent to Jehu, saying, We are your servants. We will do all you tell us, but we will not make anyone king. Do what is good in your sight. Then he wrote a second letter to them, saying, If you are for me and will obey my voice, take the heads of the men, your master's sons, and come to me at Jezreel by this time tomorrow. Now the king's sons, seventy persons, were with the great men of the city who were rearing them. So it was, when the letter came to them, that they took the king's sons and slaughtered seventy persons, and sent them to him at Jezreel. Then a messenger came and told him, saying, They have brought the heads of the king's sons. And he said, Lay them in two heaps at the entrance of the gate until morning. So it was in the morning that he went out and stood, and said to all the people, You are righteous indeed, I conspired against my master and killed him. But who killed all these? Know now that nothing shall fall to the earth of the word of the Lord which the Lord spoke concerning the house of Ahab, for the Lord has done what he spoke by his servant Elijah. So Jehu killed all who remained of the house of Ahab in Jezreel, and all his great men, and his close acquaintances, and his priests, until he left none remaining. And he arose and departed and went to Samaria. On the way, at Beth Aixt of the shepherds, Jehu met with the brothers of Ahijah king of Judah and said, Who are you? So they answered, We are the brothers of Ahijah. We have come down to greet the sons of the king and the sons of the queen's mother. And he said, Take them alive. So they took them alive and killed them at the well of Beth Aixt, forty-two men, and left none of them. Now when he departed there, he met Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, coming to meet him. And he greeted him and said to him, Is your heart right, as my heart is toward your heart? And Jehonadab answered, It is. Jehu said, If it is, give me your hand. So he gave him his hand, and he took him up to him into the chariot. Then he said, Come with me, and see my zeal for the Lord. So they had him ride in his chariot. And when he came to Samaria, he killed all who remained to Ahab in Samaria, till he had destroyed them according to the word of the Lord which he spoke to Elijah. Sin will be judged by God. God is patient, but his patience wears thin over time. God is compassionate, yet he is also righteous. Payday will arrive at some point. However, there is some good news. A man named Jesus died on a cross too, triple zero years ago. Your and my sins were paid in full when Jesus died on the cross. We are not required to have a paycheck at some point in the future.
Your debt has already been paid because of your trust in what Jesus did on the cross to obtain what they desired. Few couples in the Bible are as unappealing as King Ahab and Queen Jezebel. We're introduced to their obnoxious style. They had to rely on deception, selfishness, and cunning to get what they wanted because they lacked practically any leadership appeal. 